Now, to be clear, the partisan election takeover bills that Democrats want to ram through this week are not, not in any way, successors of the civil rights legislation from the mid-20th century. It has been, is today, and will remain illegal to discriminate against voters anywhere in America because of their race, period. That's the law. Now, targeting Americans' online speech and sending government money to political campaigns is not about civil rights, it's about tilting the playing field, weakening widely popular voter ID laws and making it harder to produce accurate voter rolls is not about making voting easier, it's about making cheating easier. Changing the law so that our partisan attorney general can rewrite voting laws without even having to win in court is not about promoting justice, it's about short-circuiting justice. This is about one party <clears throat> wanting the power to unilaterally rewrite the rule book of American elections. Now, interestingly, the Biden administration staff have gone out of their way lately to highlight my, my long, strong record on real civil rights and real voting rights. The President's secretary explained that I have, quote, a pretty strong record of supporting voting rights. She's right about that. And that's exactly why I have no patience, none, for the unrelated partisan takeover that some Democrats are trying to rebrand with that banner. The Democratic leader argues that his proposed elections takeover and his efforts to break the Senate are last resorts because of new state laws that passed in 2021. He says it's irrelevant that 2020 saw record turnout. And listen to this, 94% said voting was easy because this debate is exclusively about what happened in 2021. But Democrats have been pushing these same policy charges and the same chicken little rhetoric since 2019, a year and a half before the 2020 election, which Democrats now call a high turnout success. The Democratic leader gave an interview claiming that evil Republicans are trying to attack voting and disenfranchise people. Of course, when Democrats went on to win the White House, the 2020 election went from presumptively illegitimate to exemplary and unquestionable overnight. Around the same time, mid-2019, Senator Schumer began floating a nuclear attack on Senate rules. It's a completely untethered from the elections issue. He just thought breaking the rules would make for a livelier stint as majority leader. Washington Democrats have wanted the power to rewrite the rules for political speech and election laws long, long before the events that are supposed to justify it. And the Democratic leader's effort to break the Senate long predates the latest pretext. We have strong disagreements about the substance of these bills, but even more broadly, we see decreasing trust in our dem democracy among both political sides. We have a sitting president of the United States shouting that United States senators are on the side of Bull Connor and Jefferson Davis for refusing to shatter the Senate. Was the Senate created to make these kinds of factional fevers worse or to help break the fevers? Does the Senate exist to help narrow majorities double down on divisions? or to force broad coalitions to build bridges. This fake hysteria does not prove the Senate is obsolete. It proves the Senate is as necessary as ever. Republicans have supported this limitation on the majority's power, both when we've been in the minority, which these rules protect, and when we've been the majority, which they inconvenience. And last week, some of our colleagues across the aisle reconfirmed they have the courage and the principle to keep their word and to protect the institution as well. 
but too many of our colleagues across the aisle still want to respond to a 50-50 Senate with a rule-breaking power grab. Voting to break this institution will not be a free vote or a harmless action, even if their effort fails. An unprincipled attempt at grabbing power is not harmless just because it fails. Voting to break the Senate is not cost-free just because a bipartisan majority of your colleagues have the wisdom to stop you. It's amazing that our colleagues are this enthralled to radical activists. We have inflation, a pandemic, rampant violent crime, a border crisis, and possibly a war on the European continent. But rather than work on any of that, Senate Democrats want to mar their own legacies with a reckless, reckless procedural vote they know will fail. A faction this desperate for unlimited short-term power is a faction that must be denied it.